So we can begin. My name is Laurel Rue. I'm, I work at the law school. I am the manager of recruitment and international enrollment services. I basically work with applicants um, from the time that they start thinking about law school through the application process. And then during the enrollment process, when you guys are paying your um, tuition deposit, um, making housing plans, all of that, up until the time you um, uh, arrive for orientation. I also I also work with our student ambassadors. Um, so our student, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, okay. So our student ambassador group is a group of current law students that help promote the, um, the program. They are available for questions <coughs> prospective students um, and they help us out with various recruitment activities and events throughout the semester. Um, we have a profile, um, I think that Kristen, if, if you don't mind, if you can share the um, link for the student ambassador page. Um, all the ambassadors, their profiles are on the page, so they're available for um, questions. Their contact information is on there if you have any specific questions following our panel. But we do have a panel today of, we have five current students, um, and they are here to answer your questions. So basically how this will go is um, our panel is here to answer the questions. Um, you can enter your questions in the chat and I will read those out to the panel um, and we will uh, take turns having them um, ask their questions or answer the questions. So let's start with introductions first. So we'll start with our three L's um, and then work our way down. Hi everyone, I'm Jake Zirconi. I'm a three L. Uh, this is my last year and um you know it's just it's been a wonderful ride um i'm from buffalo and i actually went to ub for undergrad as well graduating with a degree in business administration in 2017 with concentrations in marketing and hr um currently i'm in the sports law and cross-border studies concentrations at uv law um additionally i'm the president of the uh buffalo sports and entertainment law society which has been fun as well um, the reason why I wanted to go to UB is I liked being home. Um, as you can see, this is year number eight for me at UB. Um, I'm also from Buffalo and I love the city. And um, it's also an honor for me to go to the same law school as my dad and follow in his footsteps as well. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Sines and I'm a 3L as well. Um, I am originally from Asheville, North Carolina, so I got my undergrad and grad degrees in North Carolina. Um, my bachelor's is in political science and my master's is in public administration. Um, so I chose UB. I actually came to visit UB on a day that was in the middle of March of 2018 and there was like a foot of snow on the ground and it was cloudy and I just loved it. It felt like home. Um, so it reminds me a lot of my hometown. They're very similar. So Buffalo was just the perfect fit. Um, and as far as involvement at the law school, this year I'm not really involved in too much of the law school. I'm a student ambassador, obviously, um, and I'm a member of the American Constitution Society, but I'm actually working two jobs. I work for two municipal governments. I work for the city of Buffalo and Erie County, so I'm at work today. Um, and so yeah, I'm not really involved in too much at the law school this year, but last year I participated in two of the law school clinics, the Community Justice Clinic and the Civil Liberties and Transparency Clinic. Hi everyone, my name is Franco. I am originally from Cordoba, Argentina. I am a 2L slash 3L because I'm in the two year JD program. I went to law school in Argentina and I graduated in 2017. Uh, I moved to Buffalo last year, and in UB, I am part of uh, the Student Ambassador Program, and I'm also an associate at the Buffalo Law Review. And the reason why I chose UB, uh, I was looking for different universities across the country, and I found out that UB has a large international student body. Um, and I thought that if they have so many international students uh, here, it would be because UB take really good care of us. Um, during the summer, I was part of the, also the two clinics at UB. I was in the Environmental uh, Advocacy Clinic and the Puerto Rico Recovery Assistant Legal Clinic. Uh, and I am currently doing an externship with UB too. Hi, um, I'm Elias Schmidt. I am a 2L. I am um, originally from Buffalo. My, uh, for my undergraduate degree, I went to Buff State and I had a degree, uh, my major 
was English with a minor in psychology, and I graduated in 2017. I am a dual degree master's of social work in law student. Um, so this is my third year of a four-year program. Um, within the law school, I am the social justice and community outreach chair for Outlaw. UB is a LGBT organization. Um, and over the summer, I worked with uh, the Civil Rights and Transparency Clinic. And through my um, social work uh, program, I am currently interning at Neighborhood Legal Services. Um, and I chose UB because I'm from Buffalo and I wanted to be close to home. And I plan on working in you know, the Western New York area as an attorney. And so I thought that going to school in the area would be really beneficial. Hi, um, I'm Zoe Peppis. I am a first year law student. Um, I actually went to UB for um, undergrad and grad school. Um, I got my MBA um, actually in 2018 and then I worked in marketing um, the last few years but I have always wanted to go to law school and I decided the time was now so um, I wanted to come back to UB and I chose UB not only because I had already um, come to UB for two other degrees but I love Buffalo and I want to stay in Buffalo and uh, UB School of Law specifically has um, a really strong connection with the Buffalo and Western New York community. Um, right now, I'm only involved in student ambassadors because um, it's my first semester and I don't really have a ton of time yet to get involved in anything else. But um, I plan on maxing out my as many opportunities as I can over the next um, few semesters. Great. Thank you, panelists. So we did our introductions. Now I wanna open this up to the audience to ask questions in the chat. So feel free to write your questions in there. If you guys are quiet, I do have some questions prepared, but it's much better for using the questions that are of interest to you guys. So just, okay, I can start with one. Um, what do you all wish that you would have known um, about potentially the application process and choosing law schools um, now that you're a law student now? Is there any advice that you would give to someone about that process? Jake, do you wanna start? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I scheduled a lot of meetings with Lindsay um, because I was in the School of Management. So I just come right down the hallway. I'd grab a quick cup of coffee, just head right to Lindsay's office. Um, seemed like I bugged her a lot. So I'm sorry about that, but um, <laughs> so Dean, um, Lindsay is our um, the dean of her um, our vice dean for admissions. Um, she said Lindsay says it was no problem. Um, so I'll let you. I'll let you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's been an open school, so I always took advantage of um, scheduling appointments, of course, and using the resources online and asking a ton of questions. Um, I also attended the LSAT workshop. I don't know if you guys are still doing that with COVID, but I did attend the LSAT workshop um, and I just asked a ton of questions and looked up a ton of questions. Um, I also knew some students currently at the school and I knew some professors as well. So I was just asking a ton of questions and everyone was so open and welcoming. Great. So you mentioned the workshops. We, st we are still doing the LSAT um, workshops and practice tests. They are completely virtual. Um, so we can share the link with you guys for um, for our prospects if they're interested in um, participating in those. Caitlin, do you wanna do you wanna add anything? Yeah, I also bugged Dean Gladney a lot, um, and it was mostly by email and over the phone because I was eleven hours away. Um, but she was super helpful in getting me to Buffalo, and I couldn't attend any of the like campus tour dates where prospective students get to sit in on classes and meet students. Um, so she actually set up a whole day for me. Um, and the president of the SBA at the time walked me around the law school and I just felt so honored and so special. Um, but I guess as far as the application process generally, I think you know one of the things that I was really worried about was finding the right fit. And whether it's UB, and I think UB is 
the right fit for everybody because it's so welcoming. But whether it's UB or somewhere else, you will find the right fit. Um, it's a scary process for sure, but if you find a school that's welcoming and that you feel comfortable, you should go for it. Right. And so, especially with the situation right now, we don't have in-person visitors, but we did put together quite a few virtual tours um, or virtual um, resources. So we have a virtual tour. Um, there are opportunities um, like this week to sit on, on a class. Um, you can obviously meet with the, um, the admissions team and then we can put you in touch virtually as well. Um, so you can have a Zoom chat with someone um, either like the director of a concentration that you're interested in um, or you know, a current student as well. Does anyone else wanna add anything? We do have one question in the chat so far. Okay, so the question that we have is, did you know what type of law you wanted to go into when you started school or has it changed over time since you started school? So how about, maybe since this is more of a, um, uh, probably a 3L and a 2L um, question. Um, I'm sure, Zoe, you have some input too. Um, do you wanna go back to, um, let's see, why don't we actually, we'll start with Elias, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I actually, when I wanted to start going to law school, I, I mainly wanted to focus on LGBT rights. And I had no idea what that was going to look like. I just knew that that's what, what I was interested in. and. People have actually been really helpful. Um, advisors have actually, when I was getting my internship, I actually had um, one of the deans, Dean Saran said, oh, I actually know who you could intern with and like got me a contact to neighborhood legal services where I currently work in their name change program in their medical legal partnership with Evergreen Health Services, um, working on name changes for uh, trans individuals. So um, I did. I think want know what I wanted to go into, and I think people have been everyone's been very supportive in helping me figure that out. That's excellent. So you feel like the resources are there if you absolutely know what you want to go into, mm -hmm. um, help. And I, I also think there's a lot of um, alumni connection. So if you say, "Hey, I think I'm interested in this," you can definitely get in contact with alumni who work in that area, and they're more than happy to talk to you. Absolutely. Does anyone else have a, maybe a similar experience or a different experience in terms of what you wanted to do before you started the program versus now? Um, I my, my situation was kind of special because I came from another law school, so I kind of had it figured out when I started here. Um, before studying law school at UB, I, had, I finished my master's in intellectual property law uh, at the University of Barcelona. So when I started here, I figured out that I want to do something similar uh, to like complement my, my background. Uh, so during the first year, I didn't really get to take any IP courses, but uh, at the beginning of my second year, I spoke with Professor Bartholomew, that he's the uh, director of our intellectual property concentration. Uh, and he helped me pick uh, classes in order to be able to graduate with an IP concentration because I don't know how much time here. I have just one year to pick my electives. And so he told me like which classes I should um, I should take. Uh, so I think that since the beginning, I knew that I was going for IP and I'm registering today and I'm registered for like three IP classes for winter and spring too. That's great that you're able to get that concentration in. So for those of you that don't know, our internationally trained lawyers, so our students that receive, for example, an LLB from outside of the United States, it's a first degree in law um, and that enables them to go through the, um, the process for, um, you know, sitting for the bar exam or whatever requirements there are in that particular area. Um, these students are able to receive one year of transfer credit um, counting toward the three-year JD so that they graduate actually in two years. Um, so that gives you an example of, um, obviously Frank was one of our international students. This program is not available to everyone. So if you're coming um, from the US with an undergraduate degree, you're going to be applying for that three-year JD. Okay, any other ads about what you wanted to do versus what you wanted to do, do what, what you want to do now? <laughs> I think that I would like to add that if you don't know yet what you don't want to do, uh, don't worry about that. When I started my, my first law school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I went from criminal to uh, intellectual property to, I think that I tried like two or three different ones. 
And I have friends here that they started their one LA or one LB in-house counsel. And now they're uh, doing the trials for trial team because they want to be litigation attorneys. Uh, so I think that you will figure it out. Don't worry if you don't uh, have something in mind yet. Great. And Zoe, has it changed at all for you in your first semester so far? Um, I still do not know what I want to do. Um, I have kind of a bunch of different interests. So at least I'm narrowing it down a little bit. Um, and right now I'm looking to apply to internships this summer um, to try and hopefully get a better idea of what I do or don't want to do. Um, but otherwise, right now I'm still totally unsure. So I think it is okay if um, you know an incoming student doesn't know what they want to do there's still a lot to gain um, even just in the first semester as far as ideas so absolutely great so we do have another question um so this was directed for, to caitlin and then we can have everyone else chime in as well um anyone that works during the school year do you have any advice on how to balance so we have someone that currently works in a law firm and doesn't want to lose the opportunity but of course wants to prioritize school and be involved um, in school opportunities yeah, so I didn't work my 1L year, but I had friends who did. Um, a lot of friends had jobs as paralegals or clerks at law firms um, when they started law school, so they just stayed in that role. So I think you can definitely make it work. I have found that it's gotten me easier to balance as I've gone through my 2L and 3L year. Um, it was quite an adjustment my 2L year to take on a part-time job but now it seems old hat to balance um, and to have two jobs and balance. So I will add a caveat though, that I think COVID has made it easier. Um, I'm in the office for the county, but not for the city. And starting next week, I'm not in the office for the county because of the case numbers rising. So that has definitely made it easier. So that's a question you can always ask an employer in an interview. Hey, what are remote opportunities like? So you can be in the office maybe one day a week, but if there are research questions or things that you can write up that are non-confidential um, and that can be sent over email or whatever, shared on a hard drive, um, definitely ask about that. But I think it is a balance and everyone that I've spoken to, employers, interview, um, people that I've talked to, they all know that school comes first. And I think Elias mentioned it, that the alumni are all over the place in Buffalo. I feel like 99% of the attorneys that I talked to went to UB. Um, so just, I mean, advocate for yourself. It's kind of nerve wracking at first, but nobody knows what you need or can handle unless you talk about it. That's a really good point. Um, so do we have any other ads for that based on balance, especially during that first year? Yeah, I could add to what Caitlin said. I also, I work on my uh, one LA year in my first semester. I started with a job that they would require me to comply with hours. And although I told them that I that I was in school and that I had a meet, for example, one time I had a meet term and they told me like, well, but it's your job. So I had to quit that job. And then I found another job that they would uh, understand that I'm in school. And so they were very flexible with the hours. So make sure that if you want to work, especially in your in your first semester, that you don't work more than 10 hours a week. I would just recommend working part time on a Friday uh, or during the weekend and make sure that your employer, uh, employer understands that you're in school and that your priority is being a student. Um, but I think that if you find a proper balance, you can totally work. Yeah, um, I just want to follow up on what Franco just said. Um, as of 1L, I don't think I um, estimated correctly how much work um, school would require. And I was deciding between continuing to freelance for the job that I had prior to school. Um, I decided not to at all um, because a lot of the suggestions that I was getting from upperclassmen were that working isn't super ideal during at least your first semester. I do think it probably will get easier as time goes on. Um, but I do think maybe if you work in a law firm, they might be more understanding as far as what law school entails. So I think it kind of depends on what kind of job you're doing and how good you are at time management because um, that's definitely key in your first semester. Absolutely. Um, okay, so 
kind of switching gears and talking about law school, school overall, we have a question, what makes UB's law school different from others? Is there anything that drew you to Buffalo um, in addition to you know, the students that have, had already been here for undergrad? Um, I'll start off. It's not as cutthroat as other schools are. Uh, me and Caitlin are in the same classes and there's no competition to see who's smarter, um, who talks a lot, even though I do talk a lot. Um, but I know some other schools will rank grades based off of how well you do compared to other people. Uh, UB is not one of those schools. You get whatever grade you deserve. So if everyone in the class gets a 96 or above, you get an A. It's not, well, this person was the last person in the class, so there has to get an F. And, um, so what that does is that grading system allows for me and Caitlin to work together um, whether it's sharing notes, um, you know, maybe I know some students will get lunch together, go over everything, or even live together and um, work on their work together. But it's it's not as cutthroat. It's much more collaborative, which is what life is going to be at a firm, uh, especially when you, you'll be a junior associate, you're working together and um, trying to churn out work as a member of a team. So it's great that UB instills the, that teamwork in us uh, very early um, using that grading system. Any other thoughts or feelings from the panel? Um, I can speak a little bit. So I can't, you know, obviously compare our law school to any other law school. Um, but from just the visits, um, I visited a bunch of law schools up and down the East Coast because I knew I wanted to stay on the East Coast. Um, the faculty members at UB were willing to speak to me the day that I came to visit and they were willing to email with me through the spring and the summer before I started at UB. Um, and that has only continued. Our faculty is amazing. They are accessible all of the time. I mean, like emailing you at midnight or 2 a.m. because they can't sleep, but they're up and they're answering your questions. Um, they're just amazing. So I think if that's something that you're looking for, faculty members that you can go to with questions or just to talk about life, um, that's something you'll find at UB. Franco, did you have some input? Because you are one of our students that obviously was not here uh, for a previous degree. So what drew you to UB? Uh, I think that I would also add to what Jake said, the in UB, you find like a community, like you don't, you're not competing between other students. And I, I've seen that in my prior law school and I've seen that with friends that are in law school in the US and in, in different law schools, the, it's a competition for them basically. Uh, who does better, they compare grades and it's like they're competing between each other all the time and I do not see that here. And also adding to what Caitlin said, I found really good response from faculty and from the admissions office when I was in the process of uh, applying. Uh, I remember UB, I applied to all law schools at the same time and UB got back to me like two or three weeks after while well, some of our schools gone back to me like after six months. Um, so I found that close contact between uh, admissions office and the re on faculty and stuff with the students too. Great. And Elias, for you, I kind of want to give you a, a bit to speak about your, um, your dual degree program because we do have dual degree programs. So we're a premier public research university. We have lots of other graduate programs and we have the opportunity for you to pursue two degrees at once. So Elias is doing the JD MSW. We also have like a JD PhD, JD MBA, um, JD MUP. You can go to our website to learn more about all of our dual degree programs. Um, but for you, it's that, that was a draw then I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was a really unique program. I hadn't seen anything quite like it as some of the other schools I had been looking at. Um, and the skills uh, associated with kind of the social work field was some were things that I thought would really be beneficial in applying to um, my future plans, like as an attorney, especially in working with underprivileged populations like LGBT popula populations. But yeah, it's been it's been really great. Um, you know, social work school is extremely different from law school. Um, so kind of balancing those two different worlds at the same time has been 
kind of a challenge, but professors are really helpful. They really understand. Like if you go to people, like professors, and you talk to them and you're like, hey, this is my situation, they are understanding and they are able to provide like help where they can. Great. So we do have a question specifically about the LSAT. Just to preface, um, and as well as our LLM applicants, they do not have to take the LSAT. Um, the LSAT is an option for our three-year JD students. We also um, open up your dual degree might be a better choice, but this um, question specifically is about the LSAT. So how much time would you guys suggest um, to set aside to prepare for the LSAT? I would say, however, um, how much time you'll be comfortable. I mean, it's hard. I like I saw Caitlin's face when that question was asked. She like almost went crazy because it's time consuming and you spend a lot of your weekends and weekdays studying it. And, and I was in grad school. I think maybe Zoe was too. But yeah, so balancing grad school and studying and like trying to get your life together to move. Yeah, it's a lot. But it's so worth it's it. It's a lot. Exactly, it's, it's worth it. Um, and I'm sure the logic answer is another stressor that was added to your life at a time that you didn't really need any more stress. But um, it, you're gonna have to spend as much time as you need. It's, it's different for every person. Um, you'll know when you're ready. Um, just take practice exams, do a ton of practice questions, watch lecture, lectures. Um, there's free YouTube lectures. Um, I did the LSAT workshop at UB and that was a whole day. Um, so just, you'll know when you're ready, but until you know you're ready, put as much time as you can into it. I think I would add to that. Um, I only took it one time, but I know that a lot of the students at UB um, and other friends that I have from back home that are in law school took it more than once. So if you have, if you're a person who has a lot of test anxiety, set aside a couple of extra months knowing that you might not do well your first time because you're so nervous and give yourself that extra time to take it again. And that's not to say that you won't do well the first time you could do beautifully and I'm sure you all will. Um, but, you know, just know yourself how much time you personally need to study, you know, are you a person who can study for six months or are you really a person who can only study for two before you get bored. Like just know yourself, um, give yourself plenty of time and at the end of the day it's just a test so much more goes into getting into law school than just your grade on the LSAT. Yeah, I totally agree with what Caitlin just said too. Um, I think it's a personal choice about how you how you want to study. I actually didn't take the LSAT. I took the GRE, um, but it's a similar kind of test. I think the LSAT's maybe a little harder, but um, I set aside like a few hours every night, every weeknight at least um, for like three months before I took the test. And that actually worked out really well for me because it allowed me to kind of build up my confidence. And by the time I took the test, it was like, I'd been working on it for so long, I felt pretty confident and um, I only took the test once. So I think, you know, just coming up with like a study plan at the beginning is helpful. Absolutely. Um, it's good to get the perspective from for the GRE as well. Um, so we do have a question from Jenna on here that I'm going to say because I wanna end with this. So thank you for, for asking that question. Um, let's go to Sophie's question though. I've heard that health and wellness go out the window in law school, especially during the 1L year. Has that been true to your experience? How or have you find how have you all found ways to um oh, to take care and avoid burnout? And how has UB supported you in this? So I think this is a very important question, and I'm sure you guys all have thoughts on this. Yeah, I can start because obviously I'm in it right now. Um I do you think that it is key to take care of yourself um, in general in law school? I found that this semester was kind of like a bell curve. Um, you know, the middle of the semester in October, there were like three weeks straight that were really intense that I had a ton, especially because of COVID, 
So they got rid of our um, fall break that we normally would have. So I had a lot of assignments falling on top of each other and midterms all going on over the course of like two and a half weeks. During that time in particular, I really felt kind of burnt out, but um, you know, it's all about your mental mindset also. Like I just told myself, I'm just gonna get through it. I tried to compartmentalize and time manage my time to make sure that I was getting enough work done, but also being able to sleep and eat and rest when I could. Um, I think the biggest thing that's helped me is just being able to take breaks from school in general. Um, I think that my productivity actually goes up when I am able to, you know, a couple nights a week, take a few hours off to hang out with my friends or to watch TV even because that's just another way to like decompress. So I think as long as you can really actually kind of force yourself to take breaks, it's more helpful because a lot of times you'll feel like you have to just keep studying, keep studying, but um, you know, taking breaks is really helpful. One important thing that I would add to was always said, uh, keep your non-law school friends close to you because you will want to hang out with people that is not in law school. Otherwise you would just be talking, like if you hang out with your law school friends, you're gonna continue talking about law school and you're, nev uh, you're never gonna get the rest that you need. So if you want a really good break, just uh, talk to non-law school people. Uh, but yeah, take care of yourself, uh, take breaks when you need it, uh, eat, sleep, uh, exercise. It's like, you need, you need a break uh, every once in a while. And if you don't take the break, you're just not gonna perform like you're supposed to. Any other thoughts? I know with me, uh, when campus is open, if I have a really tough day, I'll just get a coffee, put on a podcast, listen to music, just walk around the spine or the campus a bit, just to kind of relax and um, get away from the work. Um, I'm also not the best person when it comes to this because a lot of my health and wellness outside of law school will depend on how the bills do on Sunday, which if you're from Buffalo, you know that's not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, they're having a great season this year, so I'm feeling great this semester, but um, just find something that you like to get away from law school. Uh, mine is sports, so I'll put on a Sabres game or a Bills game or something or a basketball game just to get away from it. Uh, or even have it as background noise as I'm reading a case or typing a paper. Um, just find something to get away. Um, Buffalo's great with that. There's a ton of places to walk, a ton of places to eat. Um, really, you know, it's not a big cost to go to Niagara Falls and walk or go to the Delaware Park and walk. It's free. So uh, use that to your advantage. Any other balance tips, Caitlin or Elias? Um, yeah, I think it just kind of builds on what everybody else said, but really knowing your own limits and kind of understanding your physical and emotional health needs, it, in my opinion, comes before everything else. Like those, those things will always come before school for me. Um, so really being able to practice self-care and like having those boundaries and time planned for yourself that is away from school um, is really important because at least for me, like, like I said, my health will always come before school. So if I get, I don't know, like an A minus or something instead of an A because I had to take time to like for myself, that's not, that's not like the end of the world for me. Absolutely. Are there any other specific resources that you guys have taken advantage of um, from UB that have helped you to maintain this balance? I'm actually in a class right now. Um, it's called mindfulness and like professional identity or something like that. Um, and we meditate. So every week we get a new meditation practice and we practice that meditation practice um, for a week. And then the next week we talk about it and we either change practices or we build on the practice. Um, and so that's a class that you can take and get credit for. And it is all about self-care and being grounded because that's how you serve your clients best. Um, but outside of that class, I know that the law school does have like meditation and yoga that they're doing virtually. Um, I think my property professor from 1L year does yoga virtually for the law school. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
but yeah, the law school has a ton of things. I remember one L year, I'm like a huge dog person. Um, and one L year, they had like a couple of days that therapy dogs would come to the law school and then like professors would bring their dogs too. And you just have to take advantage of the resources. We get bombarded with emails. And so if you actually read your emails, you will see all of the resources that are available. Um, the law school really wants you to do well and to take care of yourself. Great, and um, Kristen put in the chat the link for student services. Um, there's information on dealing with law school stress. So if you wanna be proactive about you know, making a plan for your 1L year and beyond, um, they're you know, absolutely great tips from the panel and there are resources too that you can take advantage of. Um, so other questions. So I don't think I've seen any other new ones come in here. Um, how have you guys been dealing with, um, with our virtual learning environment? Do you have any tips for students um, even if they're, you know, an undergrad right now dealing with um, the virtual learning environment, any thoughts or advice on, on, you know, anything having to do with that? Um, I would say re-talk to your professors. I think I bother my professors all the time, setting up like office hours and sending emails, like they're there to help you learn. And so reach out to them and talk to them if there's anything you don't get. I think my biggest thing has been not doing class from my bed. And I will say as the semester has progressed, I have been slacking on that, um, especially because I take three evening classes. So on Monday night, I'm in class until 10, which is brutal. Let me just go ahead and say it's brutal. Um, but it really is important to get up every day and get out of your bed. Um, you retain information so much better if you're not slouched and scrolling on your phone because your phone's plugged in next to your bed. It's just, get out of bed. Yeah, I agree. I think um, the key is to stay disciplined. Um, it's a lot easier during um, virtual classics, classes to be able to, um, you know, kind of get distracted or daydream or not be as focused. Um, and I think if, as long as you maintain you know, the same mindset that you would if it was an in-person class, you will get a lot more out of the class. Um, I think that that's just my biggest thing being at home. I only have three in, uh, three virtual classes and I have two in-person classes, but um, for those virtual classes, sometimes it's really hard not to be like, you know, texting my friend or like responding to something during, like responding to an email during class. You really have to like zone into the class as if you would, as if it was in person. I would say use the flexibility that COVID has provided to your advantage. If you are a morning person, watch your lectures in the morning. If you are a night person, watch your lectures at night. Um, with COVID, our classes are now recorded and put on UB Learns, which is our student portal are all of our assignments and articles and now class lectures are located. Um, so it gives us the opportunity to take class when we want on our own time. Um, now, of course, you have some participation grades where you have to read for that class and answer some questions. So not everything is on demand, um, but it provides you the opportunity to learn at times that you're um, at your best. So use that to your advantage. Great, so it seems like you guys have quickly figured out what works for you in this type of environment. Um, you know, we're hoping that beginning in the fall, um, everything will be fully back to our normal in-person um, instruction. Um, but another thing that you guys have been doing is still um, keeping up with the clinics too. So those of you that are involved in clinics this semester, that's still going on as normal. Um, so Kristen, there was a, a question about which um, clinics are available at UB. Kristen posted the links for the clinical legal education, so you can see the full list there. Um, but I want to give you guys a chance to talk about what your experience with the clinics has been like. So Zoe, Zoe, you're not, not there yet. You're still in your first semester. Um, Elias, do you want to start? And then we'll go, um, we'll go from there. 
Yeah, um, over the summer, I worked with the uh, Civil Rights and Transparency Clinic, and uh, I loved it. It was a really great experience. Um, it was really my first experience doing any sort of real legal work, too. And so I thought it was, I don't know, I loved it. It was an absolutely wonderful opportunity, and the work was stuff I was really interested in. Franco, do you want to go next? I wanted to unmute myself and I turned off the video. <laughs> um, my experience with the clinic was kind of different because I was not a student attorney. Uh, I was a research assistant for the clinics. So I was more doing like all the paperwork for the clinic and running just the research. Um, I think that I acted as a student attorney just for, for one issue, but I was working for two clinics. I was in the environmental law in the Puerto Rico recovery assistant clinic. Um, for the environmental clinic, I was working on the Clear Water Act and the Puerto Rico will basically assist in Puerto Rico, especially the NGOs uh, after a hurricane uh, to rebuild Puerto Rico. And I got to learn a lot um, about how to assist in a firm movie because I was just uh, running the research for them, uh, but definitely improved my, my research skills. Jake or Caitlin, any um, thoughts on how your experience at the clinics has gone? Anything that stood out to you? Um, so I did two different clinics last year. I was in the community justice clinic, um, which I think is on pause right now. But I worked on immigration and workers' rights. And so I actually worked on an immigration case. Um, and we had the hearing. Um, in front of the immigration judge and our client was granted the ability to stay. Um, so I'm no longer in that clinic, but um, I know that the professor who was running that clinic um, is still working with that client and helping him through the process because the process is incredibly difficult. Um, and then I was in the civil liberties and transparency clinic, which I think is now the civil rights um, clinic. They've kind of changed names because they've changed their focus a little bit. Um, but in that clinic, I worked on a couple of different cases um, and I learned all about the First Amendment and like freedom of information laws. And that was something that I had never worked with before. So whatever clinic you end up being in, you will learn so much and have such invaluable experience. I actually haven't participated in any clinics. Um, so that's why I kind of kept silent the whole time. Um, however, I have spent my time um, writing for our sports blog for the Buffalo Sports Entertainment Law Society. So that's where I have done some of my extracurricular work. Um, and just to speak on that, sports law is great because it's everything from criminal law to contract law to property law to labor law to immigration law and you just get a little taste of everything in a field that i personally enjoy um so even though i can't speak on a clinic i can speak on it so that's a good segue you you're doing a concentration so could, what is a concentration um at the law school level what does that look like um, so a concentration is just a, um, a class path uh, where you're going to take a certain amount of classes and a specific um, subject um, in the hopes of getting a certificate. So I'm in the sports law concentration. So I have taken sports law one, uh, which is a general overview of sports. I'm taking sports law two, which is a class focused on creating an expansion team for the National Football League and going through all the hoops to get that application approved. I have taken NCAA antitrust law, which looks at how sports organizations are given preferential treatment from antitrust scrutiny. I've taken NCAA regulations, which is looking at all the NCAA bylaws. Um, and their legal basis, um, because the NCAA, even though it's a organization um, with public institutions, it's still considered a private organization where rights such as due process aren't necessarily uh, granted to people that have issues with the NCAA. So it's a little different. 
And then the capstone of that concentration is the B cells form, uh, which is where we write a weekly post and publish it online with any sports or entertainment subject that has a legal background to it. Now I'm also a member of the cross-border studies concentration and coming from a Buffalonian who has spent a lot of time in Toronto and I'm very mad that the border is still closed, but um, I've always seen opportunity in Toronto and using Toronto and Canada as a base to expand my legal knowledge. So I'm currently in international trade. I've also spent time in the New York City program for finance and law. I spent a semester there, which is great to learn more um, on the ground knowledge of how to conduct a mergers and acquisition deal. And then the capstone of that class, it will be in your third year in the spring where you are supposed to go to Toronto and learn about um, international law from American firms because uh, firms in Buffalo do have offices in Toronto. However, because of COVID, that would be virtual this year. And I've also taken classes in IP and some business, other business classes as well. So you can make I don't want to say you can make any concentration because, you know, we have our set list, but you can really take any class you want to create your own program. Absolutely. So our concentrations and curricular programs show where we have depth based on faculty research and our coursework. So that's great that it's a great example for sports law, um, taking advantage of all of the things not only available through the concentration, but also um, locally with Buffalo with our professional sports teams. So that's awesome. Um, can I have one more thing? Yeah. So Professor Drew, who runs it, used to be counsel for the Buffalo Sabres, as well as some other NHL teams. Another faculty member is uh, Professor Jerry Meehan, who is a UB grad um, and also captain, former captain of the Buffalo Sabres and former general manager and president of the Buffalo Sabres. Um, another faculty member is Joe Schaefer, who is a recent graduate, who is an associate at Phillips Lytle, He'll teach the NCAA and antitrust class. And our last faculty member is Professor Bridget Nyland, who used to work at the NCAA. And she used to be the athletic director at Damon College. So we have a great um, faculty base with sports law. That's excellent. A lot of, a lot of very specialized knowledge there. Um, great experience that you guys can utilize as students. Um, so we do have a question about um, advocacy. Is anyone pursuing a, a, a concentration in advocacy on the panel? No. So we can, um, so Jenna, we can put you in touch with potentially someone that is pursuing a concentration in adv advocacy. If you send me an email, so if anyone has any questions after, um, here is my email address, just um, shoot me an email and I can put you in touch with someone so you can speak about that specifically. Um, it's 11.50 right now. Um, so before I ask my last question for you guys that we have in the chat, do you guys have anything that you want to add that you feel like our students, our prospective students should know? No? Okay. So I will give you all an opportunity to answer this question because this comes up every single panel. It's a very important question. Um, so let me just find it really quick. Okay, so this is back to Jenna's question. What is one thing you wish you knew about in the first year of law school before you started? Um, and what was the hardest lesson that you learned during that year? Do you want to start with Jake and then we'll work our way down the list from there? Uh, sure, I'm laughing because I learned this the hard way. Um, do the work and don't prepare on your skill or luck to just get by. Um, I thought I could skim through a case and just be fine. And then I got cold calls and then embarrassed myself in front of the whole class. And you learn your lesson the hard way. Um, but just do your work and prepare like you need to prepare. Um, some people can skim cases and be fine. Some people have to spend an hour on a case just to um, understand everything. So start early, um, know what you have to do to get the work. Um, that you need to be done. Everyone has their own method. Everyone has their own time limit. Um, so just be prepared and do the work. 
think for me, it would be to ask for help, um, to ask for help before you actually need it, and then to ask when you do need it. So my 1L year, I lost my grandmother that fall semester. I had two mild concussions that spring semester, and then the fall semester of my 2L year, I lost my grandfather. So Dean Gargano was like my lifeline. Um, so ask for help. They are wonderful about reaching out to professors and saying, hey, she's got to find a flight to North Carolina like now, so she won't be in class. Um, they are great about like the concussions. So I ended up having to have my own testing room because I couldn't concentrate and light was bothering me. So just ask for help. They're willing to give it. Um, and if you don't ask, they don't know and it only ends up hurting you. I will say, do not underestimate the amount of work that you have to do. Uh, if you see in a syllabus that you have to read 20 or 30 pages, 20 or 30 pages in law school can be way longer than you think. Uh, it can take you two hours, three hours, because sometimes you're gonna be reading some really hard material that you have to go over and over. Uh, so plan ahead, make sure that you have enough time. Um, what Jake said, uh, make sure that you read everything for class because otherwise you might be called call a very specific question that you didn't know. Uh, and you're going to have a hard time in class. Uh, not that the professor is going to hate you, but you're going to have a really hard time, especially there, because you're, you're like, everyone is paying attention to what you're saying. Um, start outlining with a proper time. Do not leave it like the week before the finals, but I would also not go crazy and outline every single week of law school, but I would say like two or three weeks before uh, you start with finals or exams, just start outlining to make sure that you, that you get there on time. And I think that's it. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree with like the outlining. I think it's so important to like find your studying method that works for you. You're gonna have all these people telling you like, oh, you should do this and you should do that. And it's like, just don't do things that other people are telling you to just because like you really need to find out what works for you. I had people that were telling me like, oh yeah, you should be outlining every single week. Except the problem I was running into is I would forget, like I, I didn't remember. So I had to kind of work at it in chunks. So it was able to make sense as I was going through it. And that might not be the way other people do it. But yeah, I just, I think it's really finding out what works for you. Um, I agree with what everyone has said um, so far, but I think for me, one of the things that I basically just now I'm, I'm realizing is that uh, having confidence in yourself and in your abilities goes a long way in school, um, especially during the first semester. There's a lot of chatter amongst the 1Ls about like, you know, um, the imposter syndrome and everyone when times get hard or someone gets a bad grade, everyone's like freaking out about how, you know, basically, oh, we're not going to become lawyers because we got a bad grade, things like that. But staying calm and having a good mental attitude um, really helps, at least personally, it's helped me um, be able to do the work if I feel like I'm confident in what I can do. So I just think that that's something that personally has helped me and that I you wouldn't normally think of is like an important thing you should focus on, but having confidence is definitely helpful. Absolutely. You guys have to trust in yourself that you made it through the admissions process. You were chosen because the admissions committee um, absolutely has faith in your ability to succeed. So don't let that imposter syndrome um, get to you. You'll definitely figure out what works for you. So that was all great. Uh, we don't have any more questions from the attendees. So I just want to thank everyone for attending. Um, this is our last open house event for the week. And thank you so much to the panelists. You guys are so busy, lots going on at the end of the semester. So thank you so much for your willingness to participate. You're all wonderful. And um, uh, if you have questions for the panel, you can um, go to the student ambassador website to see the profiles and reach out. We also have the list of everyone else that's in the program too. Um, and you can absolutely reach out to anyone on the, you know, the missions team or the um, student ambassador group whenever you have questions. We're all more than willing to, to talk um, either an email or set up a time to Zoom, whatever you prefer. So um, given the environment right now, definitely take advantage of all the virtual um, 
resources that we have, and we cannot wait to be able to welcome everyone to campus again um, and have our standard open house um, agenda. So all of the recordings from this week will be posted to the website. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to find those hopefully in a, a week, you know, probably a week or two. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for, for attending. Um, have a lovely Friday and a great weekend. And I hope everyone is staying sane and happy and safe. Um, and we look forward to um, speaking with you guys about the application process um, whenever you have questions, okay? All right, thank you everyone.